and back. Hi, I'm Luke Hector from The Broken Meebo and this is your first time checking out the channel then be sure to stick around for some other video content including solo plays, top 10s, reviews, all about games and the people who play them. And if any of the games on this list take your fancy, then consider requiring them from zatu.co.uk using my code TBMEEPLE5 in the bottom corner in order to get a 5% discount on your entire basket of games. Check your shelf, see if there's a gap and consider filling it in. What am I talking about here? Well, Ticket to Ride, as you can see, has had just a few expansions here and there. And obviously you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, I've got the Ticket to Ride, but which one should I get? I mean, this one or this one or this expansion? Is that a map? I have no idea. Well, that's what this top 10 list is for you today. So I'm essentially going through my top 10 Ticket to Ride sets. And this includes all the base sets as well as all the expansion packs with one or two caveats. And that is, well, to say the two caveats are essentially the two or three games I have not played in the Ticket to Ride universe. I have not played every single single set that Ticket to Ride has had, but to be honest, the ones I have not played really aren't really a big factor, because one of them is Ticket to Ride the Dice Game. I don't know of a single soul who likes the Ticket to Ride Dice Game. I have not played the Alvin and Dexter spin-off weird thing that you used to do with the USA map that has like Godzilla running around or something, I can't remember, I'm not even sure if you can get it anymore. Same goes for the Ticket to Ride Dice Game. And thirdly, I've never played uh, Ticket to Ride Marklin, but you know, it sounded good, but the thing is that was kind of a special purchase. It's been re-implemented as Germany now, and even then I don't think you can get a copy of Markland anyway. So let's face it, pretty much all the Ticket to Ride sets of the mini sets, the base sets and the expansions that you can get now, I've played. So there's a lot of eligibility for this list, and these are my favorite 10. My number 10 set will go down as probably the meanest, most anger-inducing, most rage-quitting version of Ticket to Ride that there is. This is definitely not one you want to play if you are one of those that doesn't like the tightness or the meanness or the potential blocking that Ticket to Ride can offer. It is, of course, the heart of Africa. This one right here. This is pretty much designed to ruin friendships. It really is that bad at times. Not in a bad way though. I enjoy playing this one. It is my 10th favorite after all. But you need to know going in, this will hurt. Particularly if you're one of those players who likes to hoard cards like my dad does all the time. He's always constantly getting a huge hand of cards, then deciding what to do. You try doing that in this one. Yeah, I double dare you. Africa basically has a map with a lot of cities that have only like one route going into them and they could be of a single color. But on top of that, you also have these terrain cards, which is another deck that you can draw from, which require, which are required to go on specific areas of Africa. So if I need to get across the north of it, I might need these savannah ones, for example. So not only is it harder to place down a route, but there's less routes available, everybody's gunning for them, Wowee, is it pretty tight. You know, this is easily my tightest map that I've ever played. And, you know, that's saying something, considering there's one or two on this list that you can argue are pretty tight as well. But, yeah. Oh, it, this is one that you play because you want that tension. You want that tension of, oh, I need to get across the board quick. I don't know. Come on, go. Oh, we're good. And then repeat that about 50 times. <laughs> because you will get blocked. You will get taken out. This easily has, the, like, the worst case of negative points for tickets that the Ticket to Ride sets have. Whew, it's good, fun tension. But, yeah. It is tense. You cannot hoard cards in this. You need to get going. You need to get across Africa. You need to do what you need to do. And even then, you are not guaranteed that you'll be able to do it. It is one nasty map, but still good fun. But like I say, there are still nine that I prefer. My number nine is an unusual one. And I must admit, when I play games, I'm a little bit annoyed when you have games with ridiculous scores. Like the scores can go to 350 million. And it's a minor gripe. It's not like I detract a point for it. But when it happens, it's a little bit irritating. And this one definitely has a lot of that point inflation. But I like the dynamic with its economy. And that is Ticket to Ride Netherlands. This one 
Right up there, good old Netherlands. This one is an interesting one. There's a lot of double routes all over the map, and the first person to go on the route has to pay a toll fee to the bank in order to do it. And like you've basically got this plethora of cash, which essentially helps you with points. But the second person to use the route, the one who claims the double, has to pay the toll fee to the person who built it. So everybody's got this little economy micromanaging thing going on with paying toll fees for the routes that they go on by themselves, but hoping that somebody else will use the double route in order to give the money back to them. And this is going everywhere. So some money to the bank, some money to this person, some money to that person, and it gets insane. Add to that the fact that the tickets for the cities are pretty point inflated as well. I mean, like normally you're used to seeing tickets between like two points and nine points, you know, occasionally double digits. Here, I can't even recall if there's any tickets in this game that actually have single digits. You know, it's kind of ridiculous. So the points can go all over the shop and you want, you know, it does mean that you don't end up with a lot of, shall we say, close scores. <laughs> Most of the time the scores are somewhat wild. But it's just a cool little neat system. The board looks really cool. I like the, uh, like the all the green all over it. It does give you that kind of Netherlands flair. But yeah, that little micromanaging system just really works for me. Not one that I pull out often, I admit, because this one is definitely geared more to the veteran Ticket to Ride gamer, I would say. And I think one on this list might also be that kind of thing. Well, actually, a couple, really. But this one, yeah, this one's like, oh, is everyone familiar with Ticket to Ride and pretty au fait with it? Then fine, we'll bring out Netherlands. But if I was teaching people Ticket to Ride, there are plenty of sets I would certainly put in front of it. But yeah, if you like managing cash, then Netherlands is the way to go. Now, I have so far mentioned sets that were just a map by themselves. I'm not ranking sets based on the box, I'm ranking it on the individual map. So if there is a pack that gave you two maps, I'm talking about the individual map, not just the box set. This is another example. It's a small map geared only for two to three players. It works pretty well. It's got that little uncertain tunnel system in it. And this is Ticket to Ride Switzerland. I really want to visit Switzerland. I really do it. It's so high up on my list. I love Alpine scenery. But the Switzerland map is a nice, fairly simple, tight two to three player map. But it has those tunnels that you get from the Europe map where there's a little bit of uncertainty as to whether you'll be able to make it. And yeah, it's a luck element, but then Ticket to Ride is a good amount of luck in it anyway. So I don't think it's that big a deal to add a little bit more. And it's just a case of pushing your luck. You know, you can go on the tunnel and hope that you won't draw a single color card, which essentially the idea is, is that if I go on a tunnel that requires blues, I spend three blues to do the track, but then I have to draw three more cards, and if any more blues or wilds turn up, I have to add another blue, so you can, like, go for broke and think, come on, I'll put down the three blues, don't draw another blue, don't draw another blue, but then you're asking for it if you get screwed over. Normally, you would go in with, say, one or two extras in order to pay the extra blues on top, but again, you know, you might get hosed on that as well. It's just the nature of building tunnels. It was dangerous back in those days. But with this one, I just like the tightness of the map. It's a nice, small map. Easy to, sort of lots of little routes everywhere, but some major areas that you've got to get to. And I like that you're kind of going to the border countries as well, that you've got to pop over to Germany on one side, Italy on another, France on another. And so you've got tickets that not only go within Switzerland, but also want to say get from France to Germany. And the points vary depending on which border you go to. So you've got a bit of flexibility with the tickets. It says, right, I've got to start from Italy. Let's see, if I go to France, I get this many points. If I go for the easy option, Germany, I get a few points. Or I could go for broke and really try and get over to, uh, you know, to Spain or whatever. I, I can't forget what the countries are. And, you know, get more points that way. So it's a nice little interesting map, but I think it's because I like playing games with three players a lot. And so rather than playing a Ticket to Ride game with four or five, I find three to be a good number for a lot of the maps. And for this one, even better, because it's maximum three and it means you get the double routes, which means it's still, it's not, well, even though you get the double routes, it doesn't necessarily make it a friendly map. It's still pretty tight with double routes or without. So I like this one. There's nothing major about it. It was one of the earlier maps. There's not a ton of extra rules in it, but it's just a, I think it's more for the layout and the smaller scale of it, which is why I sort of put this in my top 10. 
With a number 7, I mentioned Marklin earlier had been re-implemented by another map, and that is Ticket to Ride Germany. Germany is a big base set on its own, so you can buy this one on its own and it will do you, it will give you all the pieces, the train cards, etc. The previous ones were all expansions. With Ticket to Ride Germany, you've got quite a fat map, and I will say this is probably one of the more easier maps to get around in terms of tickets because you've even got triple routes on certain player counts. So if you don't want too much blocking then Germany is a good one to go for. But the reason this one appears in the top 10 is because it re-implements something that was in, I think it was in Marklin but it was also, well some of it was in Marklin but it was also in uh, Ticket to Ride Zugum Zug or Deutschland or something. I think it was like a previous own, German only version of it. But Essentially what it does is now it now gives you colour meeples, passengers, to put on all the various cities. It's basically just a glorified set collection. But the idea is, is that when you go to the cities uh, with your train routes, you also get to take meeples. And at the end of the game, you score points if you have the most of a particular colour meeple. And there's something like five different colours. I mean, there's quite a lot of potential points there. At least 50, if not 60. I'm trying to remember there's five or six colours in order to add on to your tickets. But this adds two ways of playing the game. You can go mad on tick, well, wait, three ways, in fact. I mean, you've got ticket going mad on tickets, you've got building really long routes and blocking other players, or you've got collecting a bunch of meeples. You know, you could focus entirely on just collecting a ton of those meeples. Yeah, you'll get, you know, points for your routes as you go through, and combining a strategy of simply just going for big routes but getting meeples is not a bad way to go, but the meeples can get you a fair chunk of points by the end. They are not to be underestimated. And it's a pretty simple one to teach. You could even use it as a base game version of Ticket to Ride, really, because I kind of get, well, spoiler alert, yeah, spo sp bleh, spoiler alert, USA is not on this list because, well, I'm kind of a bit bored with that map by now. I've played it to death. But this one I could sort of go, well, you know, you want an easy map to teach, then Germany is a good one because all you've got to do is say, this is the Ticket to Ride rules. Oh, by the way, there's some set collection with the meatballs. Job done. No fancy tunnels, no ferries, I don't believe, and no like specific stations and all that nonsense. It's like, no, just simply ticket a ride plus meeples. But you, it looks great on the board because you've got all the colored meeples around. It's like if somebody merged ticket to ride with five tribes, and it does pretty well. It's certainly one of the more friendlier maps, as I said. So, you know, if I'm playing against people who don't like getting blocked out, then I can say, well, hang on, how about Germany? Germany would be good for you. And it makes me feel depressed at the moment because we can't go to Essen this year because of Covid, but uh, you'll see me again Germany, you'll see me again. My number six I feel like I should get shot for or something because like people are going to be like, hang on, you hate this in other games, why do you like it in this one? My number six is half of this set, which is Pennsylvania. A weird place to have as a ticket to ride map in general. I mean, you've got you've got Japan, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and USA, and all that, and yet Pennsylvania, just little Pennsylvania. I'm not sure what the reasoning for it was, but this one involves shares. Yes, I know shares. Me, what gives? Well, it's not shares as in railroad companies and all that nonsense. I mean, yeah, granted, it is technically a railroad company, but I'm talking about the games where it's like, oh, you are a company and you get to pay dividends. Isn't that fun? Yeah, no, it's not, okay? It's, it's, it's boring, it's stupid, I don't like it. But with this one, it's just, again, glorified set collection. You go across the map, you get tickets, and you do tracks, entirely like normal ticket to ride. In fact, this is actually probably easier than Germany to teach, I would say. But the idea is, is that when you go across certain routes, they've got the company logos underneath, and you take a share from that particular company when you build along the track. You can choose in some cases, sometimes you've only got the choice of one. But the idea is, is that at the end of the game, you get points based on who has the most shares, second most shares, and that sort of thing. And there's quite a few companies to go around, some specific to various regions. And again, this is just a very straightforward map. I would dare say actually probably easier than Germany, like I said. You know, it's like, this is the map. This is Ticket to Ride. Oh, by the way, more set collection. But it looks cool. I like the layout of the map, and I like the, the dynamic that everybody's sort of going, hmm, you've got one share there, you've got two shares there. If I break the tie, I've got the lowest share, so I need to get another one of those. Where do I need to go? Where do I need to go? And sometimes you stop thinking about your tickets, and it's like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm supposed to be connecting to there. 
but I need that chair. Which one's worse? Which one's worse? And it does allow for some interesting choices. Now, there's one big flaw with the, the graphic design on this map, I will warn you. For whatever stupid reason, Days of Wonder decided not to print the chart that scores you points for laying a track. Despite the fact that when I've gone on Board Game Geek and asked the question, do you actually score points for tracks? Apparently, you still do. But for whatever reason, it's not printed on the board or given as a reference aid. That's annoying. So I suggest you check out that rule online or find more details on that. But yeah, why they didn't print it on the board, I don't know. You know, Pennsylvania is smaller than USA. If, if they could do it on the USA map, they can do it on Pennsylvania. It doesn't make any sense. But either way, aside from that blemish on graphic design, the map is still good fun to play. It's easy to teach. And despite it having chairs, it just makes for a fun game. As I say, there are the occasional share games I can go for, just not the ones that go ridiculous into the whole dividend nonsense. My number five is my dad's favourite map. I always talk about this every time I mention my dad. He loves Ticket to Ride. It's his favourite game that I've brought home. And he really latched on to, I think, the second map I showed him, which was India. This one. Right there, the other half of the Switzerland India pack. And I gotta admit, this map has kind of sung to me as well, but not for its, per its unique selling point, if that makes sense. Mainly, it's the layout of the map. This kind of almost like tall and thin setup, but you've got lots of little tiny routes. Some are like key, but then if those get blocked, you've got these long ferry routes that can go around the country if you can try and aim for those. It makes the ticket scoring in this one really cool. And maybe there's a slight nostalgic factor of the fact that my dad loves this and so I get to play this with my dad. But honestly, I do like the way the map is laid out and the way the tickets are done. It's like it's... It means that you can't do the classic thing of hoarding cards, a bit like in Africa. You need to get on with it. You need to get on and claim those little routes. And I prefer Ticket to Ride games where you don't have to hoard a ton of cards. Because I don't like it when it happens. You know, the first five to six turns of the game, people are just going, two cards, two cards, two cards, two cards. It's like, no, get going, claim routes, get, go on, do stuff. And in India, if you hang on too long, you run the risk of getting blocked. Now, there is one thing I'm not a fan of with India, and it's a small blemish, I can deal without it, but the idea with the Mancala, like, circular bonus routes, you know, the idea being that if you make a circle with your trains that have your two stations of a ticket within them, you get bonus points, and the more times you do that, the more points you get. It's hard enough just getting from A to B, let alone making a circle. I've yet to score more than one or two of those Mancalas in any game, and even then I haven't exactly aimed for them. I don't know how you're supposed to do it with five or six of them, it's insane. But I usually just ignore that element of scoring and focus on actually just trying to get my roots, and pretty much that's entirely what my mum and dad do anyway when I'm playing this game with them. And free player is pretty tight with this one, because with four players, you have the double roots. I don't think they unlock with three players, if I'm right. And with that case, you know, even, even if I'm wrong on that, the map still feels very tight with three of us playing it. It's, um, you know, it's a cool country, it's a cool map, it's got a nice dynamic feeling, and my dad loves it. And I gotta admit, I like it too. Now, my number four is probably not going to appear in a lot of other people's top tens. And this is easily, I would say, the most, if not second most, difficult one to teach players. Because you really need to know what you're doing. But it's a big, fat map, and it's got one of the most unique ways of playing the game to get to ride France. France has this weird mechanic where some of the routes aren't even built yet. You have to build them. So the track just remains, like, blank. It's not in use. But then what happens is that on your turn, as well as doing the normal draw cards and lay roads and um, roads, train tracks, etc., you draw a tile from the side. And the tiles basically correspond to the tracks, different lengths, and they have set colours on them. So I'll take a three red, I'll take a two blue or one green. And with these, you lay them on the board. So you turn these tracks from whatever neutral they might have been or unusable tracks, and you set the colour. So not only are you thinking, right, well, hang on, I need to get from there to there. You can also sort of go, well, I need to get from there to there. Well, I'm holding a fair few green cards at the moment. So why don't we grab that green and just uh, make it a green track? That's easier for me. But then you can see what other people are drawing. So it's like, hmm, they're drawing the blacks. They're drawing a lot of pinks and blues. 
I'm alright with yellow, alright, I'll take a yellow, and hopefully you're not going to be able to make that route. It's a really cool way of doing it, but it is probably the most tricky and I'd say longest game of Ticket to Ride that you can play, with one exception, but it's definitely, you know, it's not too long that it makes the game like unwieldy or anything like that, but people trying to get the hang of doing Ticket to Ride on top of building the tracks and knowing the best way to build your tracks can get a little bit fiddly for some players. For me though, I love it. I, I, I think it's really cool that I get to see the map change every game. So it's it adds to the replay value. One day the you know tracks get laid over there and they're all yellows and greens. Sometimes they're spread out. Sometimes I'm going mainly for routes and sometimes for tickets as normal. Is It just really adds a new dimension, a new area of complexity to the game. And it won't be the last of the slightly more complex ticket to rides on my list. But yeah, I don't think this is going to be a favourite for many people. In fact, I'll be surprised if the comments support me on having France in my top 10. But uh, I'll be curious. It's just been a long time since I've managed to play France. That's the only thing, because as I say, not a lot of people share my enthusiasm with it. But personally, I think France was pretty good. So a number four, tricky, but a good one. And my number three, this is the best small map of the range. It's a base set in itself. It looks gorgeous because it's all Christmassy and snowy and everything, and that is Nordic Countries. Nordic Countries is preferable to Switzerland, in my opinion, in terms of a small map. It is tighter than Switzerland even, as if you can imagine that. So it's got a good element of tension, a good look to it because everything's all covered in snow, the train cards, the board and everything. So it's like perfect Christmas game to play. But even then, just having it on the table in general, it's one of the prettiest looking ticket to rides out there. But it's also maximum three players. So it's a nice quick game of ticket to ride. I mean, two or three players, boom, you're done in like 30, 40 minutes, nice and quick. But I think the combination of all that is already good enough to put it on my top 10. But for this, I just like the layout of the map. You know, I mean, okay, I'm in love with Scandinavia. People know this. I want to visit every country in Scandinavia, and I've only managed to do Norwegian Fjords so far. But with this one, the, the layout just makes it really good and tight though. You cannot hoard your cards. Well, if you try to hoard your cards, then don't moan if you get blocked out. You can easily get blocked out in this game if you hang on too long. So it makes people come out swinging, come out fast, you know, get those tracks down, get those tracks down, get those tracks down. But even then, there's a good chance that you can get blocked. So a bit like the Africa map, there's a good chance there could be some negative tickets going. And I must admit, Ticket to Ride could use a few more players getting caught out with negative tickets because it doesn't happen as often as I would like. But yeah, Nordic countries, it's just got a little bit of everything that just adds up. Bit of tension, bit of a uh, bit of cool layout, caps the player count, but all, also just looks gorgeous with the snow capture trains and that. You know, it's it, it, I keep the base set components of this, uh, despite the fact that I've got like four or five different base set components. I love playing with the Nordic Countries one in my big box. It does the job quite nicely. So my number three, Nordic Countries. My number two comes from, I think, the newest set to release. Well, actually, I don't know. Poland might have been the newest one. It's hard to say. I mean, that was like six and a half. It was kind of odd. But uh, this one came from a very recent set. And I was a little skeptical about it at first. I thought like, hmm, is this going to work? This sounds a little bit quirky. But... It won me over. I love the country. I love this set. Japan. Japan is a brilliant map. It's a this great long thin map, which is different from the classic sort of big fat country maps. But there's a lot of elements to this I love. The fact that you've got these two sort of segments, like the subway network and this little island, which they're separate from the main map. So the subway, for example, has got its own kind of ticket to ride mini set, in a sense, of a map. But then you have to go to Tokyo in order to access this little mini map. So you kind of go to Tokyo and then spread out on the island. And it just adds this really cool look to the layout of the map. Being long and thin, it means that the tracks can be quite tight in terms of getting from A to B. But what sells this is the bullet train. The bullet train mechanism is great. Some end game scoring opportunities for being the big, you know, the person to contribute most to the bullet train. And you can track this as you go. And in certain player counts, it's a bit of a point swing. So you cannot just sit by and ignore it lightly. But what I like about this is that when you build on the bullet train, you don't get extra points. 
but you go up on the track for the end game scoring. So it's like, well, why should I? But everybody can use the bullet train as part of their ticket routes. And sometimes you need the bullet train in order to complete your tickets because you've been blocked out by other means. The problem is everybody else gets it as well. So if the bullet train builds up really quickly before the game ends, then lots of people will be able to just go, hmm, ticket, 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 nah, the problem, because the bullet train will take them half the way. The question is, when does the tick, when did, when do the like train start coming out? You know, early or late? Ooh, hard to say. But it's just really cool that you've got the normal tracks around Japan as well as this bullet train that goes from one end all the way through Japan to the other end, and just adds another way of doing routes. And the routes themselves don't get you as many points in this game as compared to other Ticket to Ride maps because, well, you do have the facility to use the bullet train. But then you might find yourself having to mess around with that little subway map or the little island on the end. It's just a really cool map. Everything just looks good about it. It's a unique mechanic that no other Ticket to Ride map has managed to replicate with the bullet train system. And yeah, it just really won me over this one. You know, it, 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 I, nothing to do with the fact that I love Japan. The map just sold me. So number two, rightfully so, Japan. And my number one, no, this is not me being biased, okay? If we were going by favorite country, this probably wouldn't even make my top 10. But uh, suffice to say, in terms of the mechanics of a Ticket to Ride map, I can't deny that United Kingdom, we, our map, our country, is the best Ticket to Ride set out there. We are far from the best country in the world, though. Cool, blimey, don't even get me started on that. But in terms of a Ticket to Ride map, the UK is my favourite. It is like a completely different Ticket to Ride game, more so than the France map. Here, you start in England, and you can only build on routes up to three big, although England has mostly smaller routes. But in order to get to France, Ireland or Scotland, or to build on bigger tracks or to build ferries, you have to get technologies. The deck contains more of the locomotive cards, and you use these to buy techs. They get you into the other countries. One tech will say, right, you can now build ferries. One says, I can now build on lengths of four or more. One says, I can do freeze. You know, you can, you can essentially tailor make your ability to lay tracks with those techs. And there's some pretty powerful ones in there. Even some that allow for different point scoring strategies. You can have a tech that I believe gets you points for laying uh, big tracks down or laying little tracks down. Okay, cool. I'll get that nice and early and then I'll spend the whole game laying down on those tracks and that little bit of extra drip feed income could make the world of a difference. Of course, trying to get from England into Wales or Ireland and that, you've got to get the tech for the ticket. That's always a pain because there's only a limited supply of techs available and of course, you're not the only person who wants to get into those countries. It can be really problematic. Add on top the weird Southampton to New York line. This 40 point monstrosity that goes across the bottom of the board and takes about like 10 cards to build, most of which have to be neutral and some, you know, fairies on top. It's a monster to do. But then you're thinking, can I do it? Can I? I've got quite a few cards here. There's a lot of blue. I might do, but hang on. Uh, my player, she's over there holding on to a lot of cards. Are uh, you going for it as well? It's like, you're not entirely sure. And if somebody beats you to it, it's like, Oh, now what am I going to do with all these cards? It's insane. But it's not like when you get that line, you auto win the game. I've got that line. I've seen other people get that line and lose. You know, 40 points is great. But if you spent a lot of time getting those cards, you might have been missing out on some good tickets or some other techs or other things. But I just like that that line is there. It's so tempting for people to sort of hoard a few cards and just go, don't mind me. I'm just uh, going to New York. And it, it can be very rewarding. But the UK map just adds so many cool things that add up to one amazing experience. The technologies, the Southampton line, the restrictions at the start, the other countries, the colour palette looks cool, more locomotives. Everything about this is just like, you know, gorgeous. It's great. And yes, I know, I'm not biased. You know, if we were going by favourite country, I wouldn't pick UK with the slightest. It could have been Ticket to Ride Yugoslavia for all that mattered, and I would have still picked it as my favourite. But when I was thinking about this top 10 list, it was literally UK, what about the rest? It was no contest. Honestly, you want to really change up your game of Ticket to Ride, then grab yourself the UK map. It really is a good, fun change. 
So yeah, there you go. My favorite Ticket to Ride sets. Let me know in the comments what your favorites are. I'm sure everybody's got their preference. You know, put in, say, your top five. That would be great. Recommend other sets that I didn't mention. Just to go over a few. USA, I'm kind of burned out on it now. I mean, I like the map fine, but I'm just done with it. Played it so often. It's, you know, getting from top to bottom or left to right is kind of key. Just not for me. Europe I was never a big fan of. Europe was okay, but I just felt it requires more players in order to do well. And I don't want to play Ticket to Ride with five players a lot, but I didn't like the stations. The stations were kind of like the wimpy version of Ticket to Ride. It's like, oh, you can do your ticket. Oh, well, spend a station. Oh, I lost four points. whoop de doo Yeah, the stations were just a complete get-out claw, a get-out-of-jail-free card that the game didn't need. Uh, what other ones do we have? Asia? Asia is decent. The map is fine. It would probably be in my kind of like 13, 12 somewhere area. I'm okay with the team mode. The team mode's fine, but it didn't win me over quite as much as others. Poland, fine. It's a standard map. Italy, I found a bit generic. It's a fine map in its own regard, but I just thought the map itself didn't really have much in the way of a unique selling point. The unique scoring system in it is nothing particularly new. And it just sort of felt a little bit underwhelming, especially compared to Japan, which was insane. Uh, what else we got? No, all of those are good. What else was there? Oh yeah, rails and sails, garbage. Yeah, the one that was... Is, uh, how do we make Ticket to Ride worse? Okay, let's make it take nearly two to three hours to play. Let's increase the randomness by adding more lucky decks. And uh, yeah, that'll do, really. Rails and sails was a complete waste of space. And you don't believe me? Find out where the copies are being sold at the moment and check how many of them are on discount or on sale because nobody wants rails and sales. Okay, there's a few that do, but it's a bit like the Ticket to Ride dice game. I guarantee you there are a lot more haters of rails and sales than there are lovers out there. It's like, yeah, not a good one. Uh, what other sets were there? I can't think of any off the top of my head. I think I've named them all. Uh, mentioned USA... Yeah, I think I'm kind of done. Maybe there's one or two I've forgotten, but then if I've forgotten them, then clearly they weren't exactly my favourite maps in the first place. So, yeah, my ten favourites. I'll be interested to hear about your thoughts. And, yeah, that's it for this show. I'm going to get on with other things now. And, yeah, just happy to see that the top tens are finally back. Thank you for your patience, guys. I know it's been a long time with the top 100 and all the other stuff I've had to get done. But, yeah, top tens are back. They are here to stay. I'm already collating ideas from my Patreon supporters as to which top 10 list to do next. There's plenty of ideas I've got in mind, some that can be pre-recorded, some I might do live, because I thought the top 100 worked quite well. I could use that PowerPoint thing again to do a top 10 live for maybe some of the more obscure topics. And who knows, in the future, if we can get to my next Patreon goal of, uh, you know, getting StreamYards, I'll be able to subscribe to well, StreamYards, the aforementioned StreamYard subscription, and be able to do multi-streams. So I'll be able to have guests on the podcast, guests on live streams, and we could do some live top tens with more than just me talking about them. It'd be great. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the return to the top 10 list, but I'm not the only person out there who produces top 10 lists, or content in general for that matter. There's a lot of other smaller creators out there that deserve your support, so why not check out this channel and see if they're right for you. Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra. And I'm Devin. And we're Annex Dinner Table. This table isn't for eating anymore. We are an extremely new channel, having launched only two months ago. Our goal here at Annex Dinner Table is to really enhance the storytelling found within board games. We want to provide in-depth coverage on all the games we cover. We're going to take you from unboxing to review, with stops for how to play and playthrough videos along the way. If you're looking for a new game but don't know where to start, our Quick Bite segment gives you a one minute concept and mechanics overview in a shorter video format. We are also burning the midnight oil developing our new campaign series that delves into longer term games and their storytelling, really leaning heavily on the eye-catching animation and stunning visuals that we're known for. If you're interested in what we're doing, join us and our friends for game night over at the Annex Dinner Table. So that's it for me on this return to the top 10 list. If you liked what you see and have earned your subscription, hit the avatar to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about future content. Until next time, you can check out my most recent upload or a personal suggestion by me. Until next time, enjoy, and remember, it's only a game.